Okay, everybody, three more days into the launch of Green Monk Blood of the Martyrs. As promised, I've got an extra video this week, this Monday, finally talking about perspective. This is actually a video I've had in the works for a long, long time. It actually used to be part of this like big perspective manual I was gonna write, and I just decided I, I didn't wanna do it. But anyway, so this is kinda just one section from that manual. I'm gonna be addressing some other perspective topics later, but today I'm really gonna be talking about field of view and how to make your images look more cinematic. Um, before that, I just wanna just remind you guys that about all the chances you're gonna have to, to, to get some giveaways. I've got a giveaway thing starting um, this Wednesday with the giveaway of Green Monk Blood of the Martyrs. All you gotta do is, is show your copy of the book, put it up on social media, hashtag with uh, Green Monk and tag two friends and you'll get entered uh, in, a, in a drawing to win. Um, this alternate cover from uh, Green Monk. Um, I also do have some other cool giveaways I'm gonna do. I've had done some, some work for um, uh, Jim Henson Studios. Um, we've got this, uh, I just got my comp copy of Labyrinth Shortcuts, the new version of this book that has an, uh, an original eight page story written and drawn by myself. Um, this isn't even on shelves yet, so you could win this and you could have it before it hit shelves. Um, there's also this um, artist tribute I have one image in here. Um, I'll give a copy of this away as, oh, I'll give, <laughs> let's try this again. I'll give a copy of this away as well. Um, of course, some probably some Green Monk books, some other uh, pieces of original art. And the really cool thing is that if you win one of these smaller drawings, you're still gonna stay entered in the larger drawing. So, and that's for that alternate cover. So anyway, I'm gonna talk about perspective. We're gonna talk about like cinematic perspective, how you can make an image look cinematic, get like a telephoto look or a wide angle look. So let's jump into it now. All right, to start with, it's important to understand uh, how the human eye sees the world. So many in images that we see are flat, rectangular surfaces, so it's easy to start thinking of images in that way. The reality is that visual information bombards us from all directions. A more accurate model for understanding how we see is to visualize yourself inside this, this sphere of visual information. Um, and the truth is that, that for even though we have like light bombarding us from all directions and this kind of like the sphere, we don't really see a large portion of this sphere. So like for humans, the human eye is really only capable of seeing an, an area that extends about 180 degrees horizontally and, and about 60 degrees vertically. So it's, it's pretty close to like a wide angle image, although it's, it's more curved. We kind of do see kind of more a curved uh, view of the world. But let's suppose that just for a second we could see this whole sphere. Um, what would it look like if we could, we could see this whole sphere? Well, okay, so what you want to kind of imagine here is that you have a sphere and that you have uh, imprinted on that sphere just everything, all the visual information all around you, 360 degrees, up, down, left, right, forward, backwards. So of course, um, you know, we see on, on two-dimensional plane, so you kind of have to pr project that onto a two-dimensional plane. So what would that look like? Well, basically it looks like, you know, if you were to cut a globe in half and then have an image uh, of two halves of a globe. So it, it kind of looks like this. This is an image of a, um, basically a 360 degree camera. Another way of thinking of it, it's, it's kind of two fisheye lenses uh, sitting back to back. Um, you know, and, and the information is, is not all equal, because, again, because it's projected onto a flat surface, um, we get better information uh, kind of in the center of the images and um, you're gonna get less information towards the edges and also there's, there's the distortion, there's the curvature. Again, that's because we're, we're you know, inside of this, this sphere. So why are we starting with this? Well, all of perspective can be thought of as a smaller subset of, of five-point perspective or a fisheye fish lens. So if we were just gonna take one half of, of this 360 degree view, it would look like this. Um, and this is commonly what we think of as, as a fisheye lens or, you know, um, five-point perspective. So if we were to lay a perspective grid on top of this, it would look like this. And it's a little bit tricky to see what's going on here. Um, let me just try to draw on this a little bit to, to clarify what's going on. But we have uh, five different vanishing points here, and it's possible because the image is, is curved in the way that it is. 
So there's a, a vanishing point right in the middle of us, right there. You can see all these lines converging on that vanishing point from the edges. Um, but then there's a vanishing point at each end. Here's a vanishing point. Here's a vanishing point. There's one at the top, one at the bottom. All these are called the zenith and the azimuth. Uh, but you can just think of them as vanishing points for your, your needs. And you can see how these our perspective lines kind of go along these curves uh, toward these edges. And you know they they curve this way to these vanishing points. So that's that's our five point perspective. That's a you know we got five different vanishing points going on with that five point perspective. So now when we start thinking about um, camera lenses, what a camera lens does, or the way that you can start thinking about perspective, is you can think about it by how much of a wide angle, how much of a fisheye lens does the perspective cover. So like a wide angle lens would really cover like this small amount of, of the fisheye lens and it would just increase the detail. So basically it would be as if we were blowing that up and just uh, increasing the detail. You can see already this is not very detailed because I literally took a chunk out of this, this kind of fisheye lens uh, and just, uh, just kind of blew it up. And you can see now already some things start to happen. Remember how we saw those really extreme curves before? You can see those a little bit, but they certainly aren't ex as extreme as they used to be. Um, and you'll notice also that the closer we get to the center of the image, the less extreme those curves get. Um, and you'll also notice that it's, it's really hard to see our, uh, our vanishing points aren't being as, as extreme as they used to be, although they still do exist. We'll be talking about that a little bit later. So this would basically would be what you might think of as a, as a wide angle lens. It's this, this little subset of, of the fisheye lens. And then if we wanted to do a telephoto, like a telephoto lens would basically be like, we're taking this even smaller chunk of this fisheye lens, we're gonna push into that and we're gonna get, get more detail. Um, this one, is, we're gonna totally lose all the detail, detail if we push into this one, but here's another way to kind of look at it. I found this image. And this kind of gives you an idea of how this works again. So this large image is a 28 millimeter. That's not even important to know like what these lenses are because you know, with different uh, uh, different cameras, you have different uh, types of lens lenses. But anyway, more of a wide angle lens is this big uh, image, and then you can see this this smaller part of that um, would be the the telephoto. And so it may seem like inconsequential. You may kind of think like, oh, we're going from a larger portion of the image to a smaller portion of the image and, and big deal, like why does that matter? And it turns out that it, it actually matters quite a bit that depending on where you are in the image, it, it can totally change how the image fills and, and how um, objects within the image uh, interrelate. And we've already seen a little bit of that, that as we, as we punched in closer to this image, we lost a lot of that curvature that we got with the fisheye lenses. We got kind of kind of tighter and tighter in on that image. So um, I'm going to show you just a couple of, of of versions of wide angle and telephoto that I just sketched out really quick. So here, here's a, a an image I sketched out really quick of of what a wide angle image light might look like. And so I'm going to kind of talk about like what makes a wide angle image unique and and the things that you can do in your images to give that wide angle look. Um, and one really important point I want to make here is I'm going to be talking about this stuff is that you can you can really fudge a lot. Like as long as you are understanding the way it works, kind of the general principles uh, that lead to something looking like a wide angle image or a telephoto image, you don't need to be like super accurate and like mathematical with how everything is going. I mean, it does help, especially when you're starting out to be a little bit more careful with that stuff. Um, but the principle should apply anyway. So let's let's take a look at this image and, and kind of what makes this image feel wide angle. So the main quality of wide angle images is that they emphasize depth and dimension. In general, anything you can do to make your image more three dimensional will make it feel wide angle. So here are a couple of practical things um, that you can do to create that effect. So the first thing you want to do is is you want to indicate. Um, two to three vanishing points uh, to make something feel a little bit more more wide-angle image. 
to make something feel a little bit more wide angle. And this doesn't mean you actually need to see um, the perspective lines um, actually receding to the vanishing point. It just needs to mean it just means that you need to feel uh, the perspective. So let me show you what I mean here. So here I've got this image. Um, I've got these two really strong vanishing points right now. One goes to the right, one goes to the left. We've got some horizon line that's actually uh, down beneath us. But we also have very strongly indicated this kind of three-point perspective of this, this vanishing point uh, up above us as well. And so it, it's really clear here that, that the perspective is very, very, it's unambiguous. It's really clear what's going on. Um, one other way you can think about this is that this is where we get the word wide angle is that our perspective is just making very wide angles and so what that basically means is we just want to see that we have these these angles that get as far away from parallel as possible especially from one side to the other so we can say that this is maybe 20 degrees but if we're going from one side of this image to the other um, we're starting to get a much much bigger angle this is getting closer to maybe like 45 degrees from one side to the other so that's what I mean by wide angle we have these these angles are, are really opening up now another really important um, component of making something wide angle is just to create really big size differences um, from things as they recede into the distance so a good example of this is look at this we got this arm here in the foreground this big arm in the foreground his fist, it's bigger than his head, right? Then we've got his head, then we've got this other guy in the background. So we're going from very big to very small. And this is connected to kind of the whole wide angle thing. So big, big changes in size. And of course, we've got, got these figures up on here that are, that are much even smaller as well. So size differences, doing that foreshortening is, is a really important aspect. The other thing I really like to do is to emphasize the dimensionality of an object. And this isn't just about um, putting it the perspective you use, but it's also really taking advantage of this perspective. So if I look at this head, I've got four planes on this head. And I really could turn it into like a box. And setting up your figures in such a way that um, that their, their bodies, um, that their faces are all oriented in such a way that you can see as many sides as possible is going to help create that sense of depth and dimensionality. That same goes for other things besides figures, you know, any buildings, any objects, any machines, uh, you know, same deal. So now the question is, why might you want to use um, a wide angle image? So let me show you some examples of, of wide angle images and, and, you know, why you might want to use them. Uh, one thing with wide angle images, I feel like they really give you a sense of, of being there. Like you're right in the immediacy of the action. Um, and I kind of like that. Like if I'm going to do a layout, if I'm going to tell a story, in general, I might start with, with starting things more distant and then putting closer and closer um, to the action. And one thing that, that's probably going to happen along, along the way is that I, the, I'm, I'm going to get closer and closer to more of like a wide angle image. So there's this idea of kind of being there, being the, in the middle of things. There's also the kind of this idea that with, with a wide angle image that you really can focus on um, kind of a sense of the periphery. That you aren't just looking at a single object, but you are kind of looking at all the objects around you. Um, you're kind of seeing what's going on um, in, in the whole setting as a whole. Uh, I also kind of feel like one of the nice things about wide angle images is they give you maybe a sense of imbalance. So they're, they're very energetic in that sense. Is they, they don't feel settled. They feel like, like there's a lot of inherent movement in, in wide angle images. And especially if you're an animator, or you're thinking uh, of, of things in terms of motion, wide angle images can really emphasize motion, especially when you have um, objects moving from the, the background to the foreground. And here you can see in this image, you have the sailor moon that's kind of in the distance. And that, that kind of gives a real sense of, of motion that she's in the distance and, and she's coming towards us. You know, and in general, that's the other thing that's important that I've, I've kind of mentioned is if you have an image and you really want to emphasize depth, distance, size, the feeling of being something that's just really large, like in here we're in, kind of in the middle of the city, um, you know, wide angle lenses can be a great way to do that, to get the sense of, of size, largeness, epicness, uh, you know, if, if you have like a, a, a giant or something really big, a big spaceship, uh, wide angle Im images are a really fantastic way to do that. One, one movie I would look at as a great example of using wide angle is, is Secret of Arietti. You get this, the point of view of, of is it Secret Life of Arietti? You get the point of view of, of the little people in that. 
and it's always kind of these really wide angle filling uh, images. So what is it then that makes an image seem um, seem kind of telephoto like we've talked about wide angle how do we do how do we do kind of this this telephoto approach and it shouldn't come as, as a surprise that it's really we do all of the opposite things that we just did with wide angle or things we'd want to do to make something feel a little bit more telephoto so again here's another image that I just really quickly sketched out um, you know it's kind of a character you potentially at a bus stop something like that um, and you can see that that this is it's kind of really the opposite of everything we did just did with a wide angle image. So um, if we were looking at it, per um, this is what our perspective grid looks like. So you remember we were talking about the, the, the wideness of the angles or the angles get further away um, from get further away from parallel. So here they are completely parallel parallel. So um, now one thing to point out here is that even though I've got a very parallel uh, kind of perspective you you can have a little bit of of uh, a little bit of perspective and a little bit of an, an angle in your perspective if you're trying to do something telephoto it's just you want to be very subtle with that it's going to be a lot less uh, than with a wide angle image I mean one thing I could I could easily do with this image you know I could really just increase the angle of this perspective a little bit and I could change everything in the image to match that and you see there's still a little bit of variety, there's a little bit of perspective there, um, but there's not too much. So you can, you don't need to be totally parallel. You can be off of parallel by a little bit um, and, and still have it fill, fill telephoto. I mean, it's really, it's really a question of, of how big of a difference there is from the perspective from the one side of the image to the other, from the top to the bottom, from the left to right. Here there's absolutely none, it's, it's completely parallel. But you know, another way to think about um, Kind of a telephoto looking image is you just really want to de-emphasize um, perspective so regardless of what your perspective scheme is you can kind of set things up in such a way that they don't all line up with perspective or they kind of like they don't really like emphasize that recession to like a, a vanishing point so that's another thing to think about is just to try to like try not to emphasize the perspective as much as as you would with the wide angle image the other thing you can do, of course, is that you, you place images in such a way that you decrease the sense of distance. So you look at this figure here. This, this image is basically built up three, with three parts. You have the foreground image. We have this midground image with the bus, people getting on the bus. And then we have this background back here. We have those three parts, and they don't seem that, that far away. So the store is still pretty big compared to him. These people getting on the bus are still fairly big compared to him. He's clearly closer to us but there really isn't that big of a difference between the different uh, figures in this piece. Now one thing you could do, which is really up to, to you, is that you can show your figures you know, more straight on or in profile, and that's also gonna decrease depth, and sometimes that may be what you want to do. Um, you know, Personally, I always like to in indicate a little bit of depth uh, with what I'm doing, even if I am in doing something that's more telephoto. And, and for me, I just feel like I like doing that because that gives just that little bit of depth that makes things feel a little bit more solid. And so you can add a little bit of subtle depth to things within, within telephoto. I don't know if I always recommend making things look totally flat. And so on this image, there's just a little bit of sense and depth in this character that you can, you can kind of see two sides of his face. Um, I could have done that a little bit with the bus as well. Like we could have set up the bus at such an angle that you could kind of see a little bit more of the front of it instead of just this pure profile of the bus. So that's really up to you. So let's look at a couple of examples of some telephoto images and talk about when and how you might want to use a telephoto image. So one of my favorite ways to kind of do a telephoto style image is I really like it in establishing shots, especially when I'm trying to show like a, a landscape. Um, I've got a lot of uh, images in, in my Green Monk book that, that look kind of similar to this, where you just kind of see these different stacks and layers of um, of landscape kind of receding into the distance. Um, I like that. I, I think uh, more of a telephoto look is really a great way to kind of give a sense of calmness. I really love this this image here, um, and I, I want to point out on, on this image one thing that I really like that this kind of this kind of emphasizes the point I was talking about before. You know, mostly it's it's straight up and down. Like we have, you look at the perspective lines in this; they're really just straight up and down for the most part. But I like that there's a little bit of perspective in here with this desk. 
you know, but it's important that this desk is really just, it's an object within in the rest of the room. And while the rest of the room really sits in this kind of calm, parallel perspective scheme, you have this desk that kind of pops out a little bit. But even this desk, even with its per little bit of perspective there, you could kind of imagine that there is like a, there's some sort of vanishing point off this way someplace. But even with that little bit of perspective there, it's still, it's still not a very wide angle. It's still a very subtle uh, angle of perspective. The other thing I think interesting use of, of telephoto, it's kind of this ironic thing because a telephoto is, is blowing up images that are far away from us, but it has a way of making things feel a little bit more intimate. intimate. And I don't know why exactly that is, like what psychologically is going on that makes it feel that way, but I certainly feel that way, that like, I guess it's because it feels kind of calm and stable. Um, and you know, I, I think if I were to kind of like speculate, it might have something to do with the fact that, um, you know, uh, human vision, we're much more sensitive to things going on in the periphery of our, our vision. We see motion, we're more sensitive to motion in the periphery of our vision. So that's like where we see threats. Threats are in our, the periphery of our vision and that's where most of the distortion in our vision is, is in the periphery. But, you know, things in the center of our vision, um, you know, that's where we, we don't see motion as much, but we see more detail. So I almost feel like it's almost a way of putting on blinders. Like we're putting on these blinders on our periphery. We're kind of, we, when we feel safe, when we feel like there aren't any threats around, we kind of shut off the periphery and we kind of just focus on what's, what's in front of us. That's my, that's my spe like psychological evolutionary like speculation on why that is. But I think that, that might be why it is. So this is the Evan Earl I really like. It's just a very calm uh, kind of uh, telephoto image here. And the other important thing that it does, and we're not really going to see that much in, in this image here, even though this is another lovely kind of telephoto style image, more of a landscape, um, is it helps uh, kind of object constancy. And that really just means that it, it doesn't distort images. You're going to see an image kind of more true to its shape uh, with the telephoto image. All right, so now that we have discussed um, the differences between wide angle and telephoto, I've got an assignment for you. And I'm actually going to um, do a demonstration of what this assignment is. And this is a really fun exercise I like to do every once in a while. Um, and basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take an image that's, that's either a, a telephoto image or an image that's, that's a um, wide angle image, and you're gonna convert it to the other type of image. So, um, I've got this image from Barry Lyndon, and Barry Lyndon they use a lot, lot of longer lenses, a lot of more similar to telephoto lenses. And so I'm gonna convert this image to be more, a little bit more of a wide angle image. And so um, one thing to keep in mind here is, is because uh, I'm, I'm drawing here and I'm making this image up, I can fudge things a little bit. I don't have to like, I'm not trying to like mathematically figure out exactly how I would adapt all of these things into, um, into a wide angle image. And I might move things a little bit. Like right now, we have these three, again, kind of three elements to this. We have our foreground image. We have this midground image here. And then we have kind of our background with these buildings in the back. And they really are, distance wise, there's, there's a dif difference between them. We have these foreground images, a closer midground, the background. One thing I might do to kind of adapt this is I'm gonna I'm gonna bring kind of these buildings a little bit closer, or some of them a little bit closer, just to give us a little bit more sense of of that depth. Um, but we're, I'm gonna just kind of demonstrate how, without taking this super technical mathematical approach to this image, how we can we can still get that sense of of perspective. So I've just I've got this this white overlay over here. I'm just using to kind of um, wash that out and I'm just going to draw on top of this and the first thing for me to do is is I'm just going to kind of very roughly um, sketch in where our figures might sit so we've got these funny hats and everything all right so immediately what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to create a greater sense of distance between our two foreground characters. I'm immediately going to start trying to create a sense of um, change in scale. So that's about where I'll have those, those two characters standing. Um, I'm going to think about these buildings. 
these buildings I'm gonna really so that's gonna be the roof line of one building the, they're gonna kind of follow that an angle something like that our, our horizon line is gonna stay about the same okay now we've got this horse and the figure with the horse I'm gonna push those further into the into the distance so I'm just gonna draw kind of smaller versions of them And then again, this this barn. Get a little bit of shadow underneath them. Got this barn on the side here. I'm gonna kind of like play with that where that's positioned. Just get a sense. I'm I'm just gonna create a really strong sense of perspective. You know, moving almost like there's a vanishing point, right? That kind of moving that way. Actually, as a matter of fact. I'm gonna do kind of two things with that. See our horizon lines kind of right here. I don't need that building to be wrapping around. I can still kind of keep it in the distance. I can still have uh, something like this. And this little building here is now gonna become a lot smaller. It's gonna be like this out in the distance. Add a door here, even though there's not a door. <laughs> Just get a sense of what's going on here. You know, put some trees up here. All right, let's let me let me increase the opacity on this to see how this might look. All right. So let me just clean this up a little bit, so a little more sense of what's going on here. So that's the full exercise. I didn't go into an absurd amount of detail, but it's, it's not super important in this exercise to do a, a ton of detail. What's really important is just to kind of have that understanding of the perspective and how it might work and to get more of that wide angle look. So let me show you. Here's That's the before. Um, so you know everything's more flat, not as much a sense of, of distance. And here's our after. You just get more increased sense of distance. And that's just using kind of those, those principles I talked about of, of how you can increase, increase that sense of depth. So that's it. I could kind of do the same thing and move backwards with, with any one of these like more wide angle images. So take that as a challenge. Try that as an exercise. Um, you know, take a wide angle image and, and try to turn it into more of a telephoto looking image or, or do it like a study of it that's more telephoto. And, and then do the same thing. Take like a, a telephoto image and, and try to turn it into more wide angle. I mean, I've got some images on my Pinterest page that, that you could look at that might be helpful on that. It also would be super helpful um, to kind of understand telephoto and wide angle for you to kind of look uh, on the web, look at a bunch of images, try to identify where they sit, and then try to see if you can modify it one way or the other. So um, let me know how the exercise goes. Let me know if you have any questions, of course, any, any comments or anything otherwise, leave it in the comments below. Um, don't forget to like this video, please subscribe, and we'll talk to you next time.